Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week we watched the November 4th, 1996 edition of Monday Night Raw and the match card is as follows. We had Goldust with Marlena versus Barry Windham, the stalker. Uh, we had uh, the Pug versus the Sultan. And in our main event, we had Mark Miro with Sable versus fake Razor Ramon with fake Diesel on the side. Let's... And we'll never let it go. No, fake, I'm, fake, I will be fake. bitter about it until they go away. Um, That's it. All right, let's get into it yet, because this one was wild. Absolutely so, insane. So insane. And like, I think you said it. You were like, it's crazy because the matches weren't crazy it was everything else everything else about this episode was wild the actual wrestling in this episode was mm, there was wrestling i'll say it happened i saw it wrestling yes did it change my life no not at all but that's but that's okay some episodes are going to be more you know character based or plot based yeah um and we just kind of we got to run with it you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. um you know the only people that are probably disappointed are the people that bought the tickets like to see the show i didn't even think of that wow that's chances are like you're only we are only seeing a portion of what gets tell of like what gets put on in front of a live audience right Uh, you've been to a um like a you know a more recent like aew like taping Mm -hmm. but they Mm -hmm. but you know they did we went through dynamite which is live and then they immediately uh taped rampage right after um, right so chances are we're seeing like this group of like episodes that we watch um has you know happened over a period of like time so like we're probably not seeing every match that is had at the live event we're probably not Very seeing it televised well that makes complete sense <laughs> all right yeah so the episode starts with a little recap from last week um between the two kind of promos like like the interview slash promo thing that we had going on between stone cold steve austin and bret hart um essentially just kind of giving us a bringing us up to speed um as we barrel towards their match at survivor series and then Which it... someone coughed during the intro by the way oh fully so oh so they they introduced <laughs> like the episode they're like oh live from wherever we are <laughs> and then and the um you know the music <laughs> playing and during some at some point during the intro music you just hear somebody very audibly like clear their throat and you're just like wait a minute like it was uh, just such it, it was just uh, such a like oh, oh oh i caught you it's like when you see the boom mic in like yes. television shows and you're like gotcha and it wasn't yeah. even like a subtle little mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No. It was like, <laughs> no no it was <laughs> it was, like, it, was so... it was a clearing of the pipes <laughs> like it like it was and we were both like was that no, literally, I, lo- I I was writing a note, um, just like from the intro, just to like you know, because I I write notes so that I remember what we watched. You're good at your job. And, thank you, thank you. And I like looked up, and I was just like, did someone just like hack, like hack a lung, <laughs> like what just happened? Um, it was just a just a weird, just a funny little like gotcha. Um, I love yep. ca- like seeing little mistakes like that on television. Those little reminders that it's live TV. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh. Um, and then we get our first match, which is Goldust with Marlena. Um, so, you know, they uh, we haven't really seen too much of Goldust since the pay-per-view, um, which is, you know, it's fine. He was kind of, like, heavy in a lot of storylines, like, before. But it makes sense, yeah. like, as we're introducing other people and kind of getting to know them that we're not going to necessarily see Goldust every single week. Um, but mm-hmm. we are... Um, setting up towards the classic Survivor Series, fi- uh, I think it's four on four match between Crash, my apologies, Crush, Triple H, <laughs> Jerry, mean... the, Jerry the King Lawler, and Goldust uh, versus The Stalker, Mark Henry, Rocky Maivia, and Mark Miro. Um, and all of these participants decided to make their way down to the ring this time. It was a so, family reunion. So 100%. So... Uh, we had the two actual participants in the match, uh, Goldust and Barry Windham, who 
you pointed out, just decided to forego um, anything that makes the stalker character the stalker um, because he didn't wear the face paint or like the top half of the costume. He had like the, the uh, camouflage pants, but everything else that was like leading, like went into this character, like was just gone. He just decided to not do it today. Yeah. And it happened, but I don't know. Cause I, cause they walked out and they said, Barry Wyndham the stalker instead of just going like the stalker and I was like first of all he didn't debut that long ago like you Mm -hmm. know maybe like five but they also did it they also when they introduced the pug a couple weeks ago they just introduced him as the pug Um, right well that right now now everyone's Christian names are involved government names right 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 100% not you dropping the government names not not Vince finding the box of social security cards and just decided Uh, like to just go with it went finally went and looked at like everyone's like uh photocopy driver's license yeah yeah yeah, yeah, but I like from their i9 form or whatever the yeah (laughs) Like just that black and white, like blurry photocopy of your driver's license. But um, it was just funny because I was like, wait a minute. The stock like wasn't that the stalker? He had the whole face paint, the whole get up, it was the, the whole, whole thing. Nine. He like he never said looking, a word. Right. He's like a big game hunter. Like that was a whole like the whole thing, thing the whole shit. And, and then he just comes out, Barry Wyndham, nice to meet ya. And you're just oh, like, oh, uh, like you're just like face, oh. fr- fresh mustache, and then um when he was wrestling, like Vince was literally like, and there's Barry with the right. And I'm like, Barry? Like, <laughs> right. what are we doing right, right now? Right, 100%. Um, it was so weird. It was it was wild. Um, so we have not only, you know, the two participants in the match, but we have all of the participants of the Survivor Series match kind of encircling the ring. Um, Vince at one point, uh, at one point uh, says we basically have like a, lung- a lumberjack match, which is essentially, you know, wrestlers surround the ring. And the whole point is that nobody really exits the ring um, at- to take like a breather um, or anything. You just get thrown right back in the ring. That is Love like, that. there is there are no breaks there. Um, so um, the match essentially like acted as a lumberjack match with either participant getting thrown in by their opposing teams yes. um during this match I, we do have an interruption <laughs> from doc um who tells us that he has stone cold on the phone and he wants to talk to vince which, which is, is so silly right 100%. like stone cold has like the direct line to doc and was like can you hey can you hey. put vince on <laughs> right like 100 I'll, I'll wait here mm-hmm. can you mm-hmm. you i know <laughs> no i know i know he's working just put him on no, no, this is really important. Stone, so put me through. So essentially, Stone Cold says that he is la- like leaving the Cincinnati airport. Also, the entire time they're like they say that Brian Pillman's home is in Cincinnati. Mind you, the entire time, like the entire time, the every entire time, time, Brian Pillman's house is brought up, and as in like it says Brian Pillman's home, and then it says something something Kentucky, and you're just like, where are we? Are we where in Kentucky are you, or are we in Cincinnati? Like I'm very lost. And um, I don't know if they did that just to like protect his address or something, but it's like, can we at least like? Relax? Yeah. And like, I feel like there's also kind of a a little bit of like a misunderstanding as far as like. Uh, Stone Cold's history with Brian Pillman. Brian yes. Pillman and Stone Cold used to be a tag team. Uh, they were really, really big in the WCW, um, where they were called like the, the Hollywood Cold Blondes. Have... The Hollywood Blondes. I was like, did Stone Cold have hair? He was, yeah, he used to have long. Blonde okay, because I was like, that would make no sense. So, but, so okay. they used to be a tag team called like the Hollywood Blondes, and they were really successful. They had a, they had really good chemistry. Um, I actually so they, love that name. Actually, the Hollywood like, Blondes. Yeah, yeah I think they, that's they so would cute. do this like thing where they would like they would like attack their like opponent, and then would they would follow them with like a like an old school like spinning camera. Oh, yeah, no, cute. So stupid. I love that. Uh, but they were like tag team for like a long time. So there is all of that like kind of free dating history like to this moment, mm. um, which is why this is like so. Person. crazy so um we're do you think they back. just don't want to mention the wcw so they're like this is all about bret hart because they're all also trying to like work the survivor series match yeah and and part of it was like uh, you know steve austin's gripe in all of this was that brian pillman uh instead of using his time to kind of like talk up his you know his best friend stone cold he was kind of singing bret hart's like accolades um which Stone Cold mm. took great offense to uh, hmm. basically being like oh you're gonna like use this time to stand next to me and talk about the person that I'm gonna go like 
into battle with like that's mm. you're my best friend like that's how you want to play that i um, see which is I kind see. of which is kind of like where this like beef comes from mind you this is like an escalated um to like the umpteenth degree as far as you know the appropriate reaction for the action you know uh oh, yeah being that no he has already attacked brian pillman and quote-unquote re-injured him chances are there were probably complications with this man like coming back to the ring anyway and they needed an excuse to keep him out for longer um which this is kind of like plays into that um so basically stone cold's like i'm gonna i'm gonna show up at his house i'm gonna do exactly what i said i was going to do i don't know why you all thought i was bluffing i'm way too important for you to do anything i'm just gonna do it consequences be damned and we're like oh okay uh and basically and essentially that's what the commentary team does also they're just like well there's nothing we can do about it so we'll catch up you we'll catch up with you later um ding, ding, ding. and like so we just cut back to the match so mind you like there is an injured man just sitting on the couch at home and like literally yeah. tubes coming out of his bandaging because it's like re they had, he'd reconstructive surgery on his ankle or something right. and there's like fluid draining tubes he's like like, so there's just a, there is a very injured man just sitting on a couch and we are told point blank that another man is going to show up to do whatever. We don't and, know. And they just say, okay, we'll just catch up with you later. So uh, we'll just then, send a camera crew and see what happens. Right, right, right. So we, we do get back to the match. Um, there was a little tidbit during the match. I don't know if you saw where Clarence Mason and Marlena were like talking together. Mm. And I was like, "What is that?" Because it didn't seem malicious. And I know that they're they're on the same team. They're on the here. same team. So I think so they were they probably were... trying to coordinate like little strategy. I love situation. that though. I loved seeing her interact with somebody else, and it seemed like obviously it's it's played up for for television. Right. But like it seemed like an interesting conversation. I was like, "God, to be a fly on the wall and whatever um, they're talking about right, like right, that," right. because she's you know she's doing the cigar and she's like doing like this and like she's right, you know right. making all the motions and he's like going like oh, okay like and i was like what are they talking about right, right, right. i want to know, know obviously strategy but i was like oh god i wish i could know um we have this very interesting moment where <gasps> um yeah where barry windham is has gold dust propped barry. up like in the corner barry barry um, big time barry and <laughs> He's going to like, I don't know, perform like a superplex or something. And Goldust just lays a fat one on him. He just a grabs him by smooch. like just Drake and Josh, like, like, you know, like kiss on the mouth. And yep. it's like, oh. And that knocks Barry like backwards. And then by that point, it's just a free for all where all of the participants from both teams just end up like invading the ring and attacking each other. Thus, the referee has no choice but to call for a double disqualification because there is no way to make heads or tails of, of who did what first. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. too much going on. So he's just like, you know what? Scratch this match. This one's this one's too far gone. But it does what a mess. Does a good job setting up like these are all the participants for the Survivor Series match. Expected to be chaotic, expected to be like see combinations of people you wouldn't normally see. Mm -hmm. So like it does it did a it did its job. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Uh, and we saw the rock out in the ring for the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the rock did. Um, so he is obviously part of the Survivor Series. Um, team and he will be making his in-ring debut at the Survivor Series. This is crazy. Yeah, this is a a big moment for uh, us, especially considering um where we're recording right now. The Rock actually just returned to the WWE. Yes, very recently. Oh so, I just yeah. So I just sent Xavier because I'm sure he'd already seen it, but I saw it. Him return to the WWE, and I was like, dude, no way! How we're about to watch his debut in mm -hmm. the podcast, and he is like but, returning to the WWE. Like right. that is so weird and amazing. Mm -hmm. And he so hasn't been exciting. back in like ten, uh, uh, close to ten years. The last time he did anything like kind of like major, um, he had a couple back-to-back -back, uh wrestlemania main events with john cena and then we haven't mm. seen him he's well we we have seen dwayne the rock johnson like, oh, we everywhere seen in, in every the context movie <laughs> of the wwf yes or the in the context of the wwe in a in a while we've seen dwayne we know he's been busy we've seen uh, dwayne <laughs> we, 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 we we have seen dwayne. he he you know just became the highest paid actor in history so yeah it's fine he's he's doing fine um but so he, it, it is very fun to like, we are now just kind of seeing like 
you know, we're seeing baby Dwayne, we're seeing Rocky Maivia and like where he gets that name is from his. So I don't know if you know this, but the rock is a ger third generation superstar. So both his father and his grandfather were both wrestlers also i did know this so yeah, yeah. so the rocky comes from his father who, who's uh wrestled under the name rocky johnson and then his mm. father or his grandfather was high chief peter mayavia so that's where he gets the two like names um, oh that's really sweet so yeah so his father was actually one half of the first black tag team champions like the first ones to ever do it so his father was wow. part of that team um, and wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then his fa and then his grandfather is kind of like the head of this um, kind of really famous like wrestling family. And they're all like Samoan. So that includes like the people like The Rock is related to, which you probably wouldn't think um, Yokozuna. Uh, they're related. Wait, uh, what? Yeah. The what? Sul the Sultan. Also. Related. What? Yes. Wait, by, wait, by blood or like in the family? Like they're in. He's the head of a literal blood family of of wrestlers. a bunch of wrestlers yeah so like there's a bunch of them um so there was there's the high chief peter Mia, peter mayavia there was the the wild samoans that was back in like the 80s um cool. and then uh there's yokozuna uh the sultan who turns into rikishi i don't know like you have seen rikishi i'm not um and then in the modern times you get the rock um and then today Part of that family is Jimmy and Jay Uso. They like one of the most prolific tag teams today, like period. Um, mm. As well as Roman Reigns, uh, who is the WWF champion. I do uh, know the Roman WWE Reigns. champion and has been for the last three years. Um, so they're all part of one really big family. Um, so yeah. Dang, what is in that water they're drinking? Oh my God, the whole family? So yeah, Go so like off. it is really, really fun to kind of see the start of The Rock's career in the WWE, like, and especially knowing, um, and the whole point, like, in the WWE right now, the the biggest storyline is called, is, like, the Bloodline storyline, which is essentially based around Roman Reigns being, like, the head of the table of this family. So, like, he's, like, the one that's kind of taking the mantle right now. He's the 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 big dog in charge. He's the one with the title that everyone's coming for that nobody for the last three years has been able to like knock off. So the fact that we're seeing like, we have all of these kind of like uh, individual wrestlers that have like, have kind of like chipped in a little bit, like as far as like creating this like now massive storyline, which has been like all encompassing for the last three years. Like this man has been in every, essentially every major pay-per-view uh, WrestleMania, like just any huge event like whether it was overseas for the last three years. And wow. it's all kind of like a culmination of like, you know, the rock threw in his, like, you know, made his contributions. Yokozuna had his contributions. So it's all kind of like all leads into this bloodline storyline. And it's crazy that like, we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of these people's like parents um, right now. Wow. Like wrestle. Why do I have chills right now? It's cool. Like that's It's very cool. So cool. I love and that. And it, to me, it like adds that element of like um how I feel like the WWE the WWE and like watching wrestling like really transcends families like even just as viewers like mm -hmm. oh I watched it with my dad I watch it with my uncle I watch it with like my family members and like how it literally transcends like generations mm -hmm. between the actual wrestlers and the fans and it's like oh I used to watch his dad wrestle and like oh they're mm -hmm. actually related to this like that is so cool I love that yeah and the, there are those family uh, reunions must pop off sorry probably <laughs> honestly well th they talk about it in um you know how like the the rock had a show on um, yes yeah young rock they go mm -hmm. into it a little bit um as far as like the family um and how like, their interactions um it's it's pretty good it's pretty funny actually during that or after that match it kind of cuts to a promo from stone cold just like on bret hart so this is a pre-recorded kind of situation and it essentially is like calling bret hart um a coward he left after he got beat by the boy toy he, and he's basically like going into just like he, like that's who beat you that's who sent you home packing like please like you are don't even know what's coming towards you at, when a real man comes for you i'm not i'm not fooling around i don't showboat i'm coming to kick your ass and mm. like and and just to because it was an insane promo like to the point where it was so insane i i laughed not because it was funny but because it was like this is insane to set the scene for you guys it was mm -hmm. like black and white 
and like that deep tone black and white where the black is like really dark um it was like in in front of like an abandoned warehouse yeah it, it was like chain link fence tumbleweed the clips were like short he would like talk over himself just by the way they edited it they had like the little clip of like the angry dog behind the fence like barking and snarling a few times like it was so like if they did their job of making it making him look as intimidating as possible especially with like he's wearing like his black ensemble he's saying all these fighting words and he's just like standing in an alley like going like you were beaten by the boy toy and then it would cut to him over like wait till you get beat by a real man and then it was like snarling dog like it was so <laughs> yeah, it crazy was i was just like nuts <laughs> like what is going on right now which is and where did they film this it's such a <laughs> um like this is what i'm talking like the stark contrast as far as like we switched like pretty hard and fast as far as like, oh, oh, now we're like reality based. Like all of a sudden, oh. like not, not for nothing, but like a month ago we had like the the plumber wrestling and like, you know what I mean? And like, that was, that was all of the story. Like we got to it. Now we're getting like these like whole ass vignettes and like this whole thing with like Stone Cold and Brian Pillman's house, like weird, like we're the WWF is actively making decisions to be like, we're going to just blur the line a little bit. Like we're just yep. going to, we're going to not tell you what is real and what's not. And we're just going to let you kind of like figure it out because they're kind of understanding that like you're, you can't, you can't hide everything from the fans, you know, mm. even at this point, like we're, yeah. the internet is coming to magazines are a thing. Like people like back then used to like pass videotapes, like, you know, the rumor mill of wrestling has already like begun in this point. So you can't, you're not necessarily going to be able to hide everything from everybody, but you can kind of blur the line a little bit. You can mm. just make it, make them question. They'll be like, was that real or was that mm. some work? And, wow. and that's a question like that they're always striving for, even like today to be like, to make you think about it. Like as, wait a minute, did that mean to happen or was that them just working? Like what, what just happened? And like, when you do that well is when you got people hooked. I mean, because now you want to know. Now you're a, now you're in it. Um, especially today's episode, girl. I know we're we gonna get to it. it, but I was we like, we're in it, s- screaming at the top of my lungs, crazy. But yeah, um, wow, I love that, crazy. Amen. So after that promo, it barrels into kind of an announcement, kind of shot of the Undertaker versus <gasps> Mankind, which we will see at. At the Survivor Series, the premise of the match is that Paul Bear will be suspended from a steel cage while The Undertaker and Mankind have a have a wrestling match. Um, so just so crazy. Like, and then that they give us kind of a it cuts to an interview with Mankind, Paul Bear, and the executioner. Mind you, the ex- executioner said nothing. He just nothing. Stood in, he stood in the back. And he was wearing like a Halloween costume. No, executioner. it was very party city. It was very party city. Yeah, very like, that... Halloween, whatever it is that they put up. Halloween city, Halloween. <sighs> what is it? Why do I not know when they put them up? like spirit halloween or spirit halloween thank that's you it. Yes. that's it yes 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 yeah no, i was no, like no, that no. would be so embarrassing if we didn't know what that was literally because they're like an invasive species they're like an invasive uh, talk of dude talk- <laughs> it does cut to a a promo from mankind um basically mankind is saying like you should have stayed buried like all you've managed to do was like piss me off like all this like blah 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 blah, blah nonsense and then the Undertaker's gong hits and his Ooh, voice man, all just comes like just booming over the arena. And he just, ah, oh, it's fantastic. He's like, he's like, I'm here. The rumors of my like uh, demise were greatly exaggerated. And he's mm. like, I, Paul Bear, I thought I'd give you a preview of like what's of your future. And it was just like, you know, his voice is so like deep and ridiculous. And so so <laughs> they they drop the the like steel cage that's like covered in this like fabric. The executioner like goes out to like uncover it. And it is like a doll of Paul Bear hanging upside down by his feet, just like dead looking in the middle. Uh, oh, it's so good. And Paul Bear does such a good job of like selling it because you just hear him start freaking out you know just like 
Ooh, like he just loses his mind because like granted if somebody had presented to me a like life-size replica of myself dead af i'd probably also feel some type of way about it so it is top tier intimidation tactic and you love to see it because mm -hmm. the cage like you hear the gong and like you you hear the undertaker start talking and like they had like dimmed the lights and i also love when they do this it's such a subtle touch but it's so good they have the lightning or thunder go off and they flicker the lights in time with mm. it so it seems like it's happening in the arena just love that so subtle so good so good but the lights go dark and then literally in like the five seconds it goes dark and comes back on the cage is already there right. and it obviously wasn't hanging there the whole time like it just appeared like they must have dropped it from the ceiling or something and like just the way it was done because realistically did he have to put anything in the cage no like no. the cage is already like scary enough it's like one of those tiny little like steel cages you like oh, it's you like shark a shark dives cage. yes yeah, it's a shark exactly cage. it's essentially so, yeah it, and we're I, putting so it's this our... large man in a shark cage and we're gonna suspend him above an arena which that's is what we've decided is the stipulation of a match that's that is what we have all just been like yep i'll take it <laughs> like Okay. Buy my ticket. But like it's just so insane. And then to have the the life-size like mannequin doll of him hanging upside down too. Perfect. Such Perfect. a good touch. Oh so love good. to see it. Love to see it. So that match is coming up at the Survivor series. And of course, Can't I wait. could again, I've said this a few times on this podcast. I could watch them beat the hell out of each other forever. Burr. like amen and i'm i i'll eat it up every time i'll be just as entertained every time. the like 20th time as the first time so it's so true i will say it's interesting that you know how like when there's a um like a pay-per-view coming up they'll usually have like the wrestlers like fight to look strong or like they kind of have them out and about and they're like doing something not the undertaker mankind they are tucked away except when they do these little moments like they just did yeah um, and like that's it. Like they're we're not getting like think... Undertaker on Raw fighting Gold Dust. Like we're just not doing that. No, and I I'm... think it I think it does a good job because they are both characters that a big part of their appeal is the mystique. Mm. And part of the mystique is like, you know, it's special when you see them. It's right. not it's oh, not so a bit, you know what I mean? They're not overexposed. They're not gonna put them on television every week because it loses the magic. You wanna you want to be impressed by the undertaker every time he comes out and like i'm sorry but if you see something enough times uh or like you know a, it's you know, true over, over again like you're gonna it loses a little bit of like of its appeal but so i think it's an excellent move just kind of we we are continuing the storyline but we don't necessarily we don't i don't need to see mankind like fight in a bunch of men i know how physical mankind can get yes i know how physical the undertaker undertaker can get and we already have priors as far as like the two of them together like creating something that's absolutely brutal um mm -hmm. you know ergo the boiler room brawl the buried alive match so and it's like, not like people still aren't talking about those like it doesn't even you don't even need a refresher because no. we're still talking about those things right so it, it it does a good job like it progresses the story but it keeps them kind of mysterious and like hidden away and i love, I love it. it they're I like love they're it. like the wedding china you only pull it out on like special occasions exactly and holidays it's like pull them out of the mm -hmm. the hutch Oh, Love so that. nice. And like, oh, it's going it, to it's going to be fantastic. So something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to transition out of that segment into the interview at Brian Pillman's house, or at least the first time we go back to it. We're going to go back to it a few times. So stay with me. Yeah, um, buckle in. So basically, Kevin Kelly is asking Brian Pillman about his surgery and basically like, what's the prognosis? What are the doctors saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Pillman's like, I I'm alive and well, uh, like uh, good things coming for like 1997. What, you know, we're we're in November. So, you know, mm -hmm, hopefully mm -hmm. uh, we get to see Brian Pillman <laughs> wrestle at some point. Um, <laughs> One day. But basically, and then he gets asked about Stone Cold and Stone Cold, ba or I'm sorry, Brian Pillman basically goes in to say that uh, there is a fine line between business and making something personal. And you have mm -hmm. made this personal. He's like, uh, and then he goes into like kind of his usual like wrestler, like bravado, ba basically being like, no one's going to know like you as well as like your best friend, like your partner. I know your strengths. I know your weaknesses. Like I know blah, 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 blah. Which I'm glad uh, he finally, like somebody said it. Right. Like, because that there is like so much depth 
to this because me who didn't know that they were a tag team before this, I was like, I don't understand really why this beef is so serious. Like I don't right. get it. But now that I know the history, I'm like, Oh, this is nuts. Like this right. is really insane. Um, so I'm glad he said it. So, yeah. So we, we get that, like, you know, Brian Pullman kind of goes into like a little bit like a wrestling promo. Um, and basically then at the end of that uh, pulls out a gun and is basically just like, I have this waiting for Stone Cold if he decides to show up. So out from under his blankie on the couch, like he's like tucked in a little blankie on oh, the couch. Fully, and then yeah, he's, he's like, like one little if he like, does show up, up, I got this. Like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. You were strapped the whole time. Uh, like while his wife is no like idea. sitting like demurely, like on the couch, like whatever oh. behind him, the armrest. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, he's just like, Oh, and, and like I, I can understand like the whole like protect your house kind of scenario. I, if that's, yeah, if that's what's know. going on. Um, but like a film crew was invited to your home today, and you decided to sit on your couch, brandish a weapon, and then just what? Wait, like what? Like what? So it's the tucking it under the blanket for me. It's like just at least on a table or like in, in a, a something holster. in a holster like i don't know <laughs> give me something no something it, not like what are you keeping it warm what is it tucked in like a lap dog like i don't understand uh, like i was like mess and i guess it's for like the dramatic effect of like well i got jimmy right here just in case but it's right. like what wh- where, where why what <laughs> like what uh, i would have it would have been better if he had been like deborah get the gun like right. and she just and, like, like got just up sent and, her like, away <laughs> and because, came like, back, not like... for nothing she didn't do anything she just uh, like she not was just yet there like but... it, it, she was just there to kind of like escalate the fact that he was like attacking like a family you know what i mean yes yeah, um, but they were like we sent the ch- or um vince mcmahon somehow knew like they had sent the kids to grandma's house over the river safety. through the woods yeah for safety but she's like i'm standing by my man so that if something happens right, our Tammy. children will be orphans like it's okay. just, like right no like we both gotta go clearly um so then so after it brandishes the weapon, it cuts to Stone Cold is outside. It's just fully outside. And he is just beating up all of Brian Pillman's friends. And mind you, he's in like the garage that, or like the driveway. We're like having this whole scene. This man uses everything at his disposal. He throws a gar like a full garbage can just like into the gut of one of these guys. Like uh, one of these guys, he then throws him into the garage, turns his attention to the other guy, opens the car door and just starts squishing the guy's head in it, like just vehemently. And then he, the other guy like comes and like attacks him. And then he goes and like brings him over into a kiddie pool and starts drowning him. Drowning like, him. Drowning, like just drowning in him pool. in a kiddie pool. Literally head in, I was like, ah, like no, this is kill him. Absolute, he- like heinous. And the best part. Like, <laughs> the best the, part. The best part is there's a little red wagon just sitting. A radial flyer. And this man just picks it up. And with all of the vitriol that this man could muster, he just yeets this little red wagon at this dude's head. Like Head! He, he like, absolutely decked him. And then while he's on the ground reeling from this, like, ridiculous like, wagon shot, he breaks off a piece of the kiddie pool and just, like, (laughs) throws it at his face just like absolutely yeets it at him like as if he was just a sack of shit and it's it it hits him so hard in the face it breaks further like it literally hits his face and shatters i was like these people better be like paid stuntmen Mm. because otherwise i don't know heinous like that one guy really like i know the one guy got hit by the garbage can and then into the garage and the the car but the one guy who got almost that- flogged and then <laughs> the wagon and then hit with the other people he got as hit like with- an afterthought just like he got hit with an absolute wagon like, like a just projectile like, oh like, just like <laughs> absolutely i can't it was so crazy it was so funny though it like, was, oh it was hysterical i've never been more just like he got hit with the wagon and i cackled like i because uh, uh, it's was- ridiculous screaming with laughter because just the way that it hit him was just I couldn't have done it like I if I had imagined it better I, I like I couldn't like I nope. there's no way and that is uh, a noise you can't duplicate 
No. The sound of wagon hitting cranium. That's where... <laughs> no, they can't do that it's... in those like sound studios. They can't. No, 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 no. What was that? The Foley artists. The Foley never... artist. Thank you. Yeah, Foley studio. You can't do Could that. Never. Never. Um, so we then get cut from that because there's still yeah. a wrestling show going on. Um, <laughs> by the way, BT Dubs still a wrestling program going on. And oh yeah, in case you missed it. Hate to interrupt your episode of Cops, but I was <laughs> just gonna say it was like an episode of Cops because it was like the one camera with like the really bright spotlight, like just being like, "What is happening? What is going on?" It was on? just like an episode of Cops. Um, so then we get into the the following match, which is Alex the Pug Porto, which is the first time I've heard his whole name. Name. Um, uh, versus the Sultan, which is the second time in like. I don't know. I want to say like two months that we've seen him. Yeah. Um, so the Sultan, I forgot about Bob Backlund. Listen, uh, how lucky for you. I you swear to God. I was like, I, could... Backlund <laughs> I was blessed. I could have lived the rest of my life never seeing him again. And I would have been at peace. But now I remember he's out there. So, of course, Bob Backlund grabs the, the microphone while the Sultan is making his entrance and just starts screaming um, something about building a new bridge and that the Sultan was going to be the WWF champion and restore respect to the championship. Bring us into the 21st century. Right, which is hilarious because he's wearing like weird, like he the costume that he's wearing looks like it was like ripped out of like... Ah, what year i don't even the know. sultan like yeah. the 17th century 18th right. century he's i like, don't even know yeah he's gonna usher us into the 21st century or whatever and i was like this man looks like a disney villain i don't know what you're talking about yeah i i said something terrible which was his mask is cool but then i was looking and i was like it kind of looks like the wrapper of a baby bell cheese i can't oh lie like God. that I red wax. Dead, that like red waxy like shiny it is like thing. fixed to his face as if they kind of and i was like looking at it, i was like that looked mm. like a baby bell cheese to me, but... You know what, go off. I guess um, we're in the 21st century. I missed the missed it. So this match was very one-sided. The pug really didn't get out of the block. It always is as with far the pug, poor boy. One. Yeah, I know. He's really... Poor just, lad. He takes it. Um, And so basically he got like a backbreaker done to him, which was absurd, and then gets put in the camel clutch and pretty much just like taps immediately. Um, mm. Again, all with the purpose of making the Sultan look impressive. I would be more impressed if this was happening week over week. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Instead if of just I would, like, oh, it's that guy. Like, every now and again, like they drag out the Sultan. He like crushes some guy that we like sort of kind of know. And then they kind of like don't show him again. Um, if your intention is to make him like an intimidating, like kind of monster person, like you need to be putting him, you need to be putting him over more frequently and he needs to be doing something more than just a kind of like singles you know what i mean like he should, be like a, he should be like attacking people backstage like he should be like getting involved in other he people should be matches. stirring he should the be pot. working his way up somewhere um but this like bringing him out every couple weeks and having like two past wrestlers just kind of scream around him before and after his match like isn't doing it for me yeah sorry yeah and like you said you put him up against tougher competitors like because right. again, it's like the pug and, and and not to diss the pug and you know, like Freddie Joe Floyd or like whatever. It's like, okay, like we know I, the result. I like, get you know it. Yeah, what you it know is. what's happening in this situation. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, can we stop a little new, a little spicier? Right. I don't know. Um, so we'll see what happens there, like what they're gonna do with him. I know down the line he will get repackaged into something else. Um, uh, but I don't know how far they're gonna take this Sultan mess. Mm um all right so after that it, we cut back to kevin kelly and brian pillman so basically it is it cuts to like kevin kelly and he is basically just like i'm here with brian pillman and brian pillman is shaking and like holding his gun just like waiting for stone cold to show up and then it cuts to like you hear this like glass breaking <laughs> in the back and the no. camera like turns around and you can see stone cold through the kitchen window is breaking the glass of the door reaches in all nonchalant unlocks it and just lets himself in and then it cuts to brian pillman pointing the gun at stone cold and then the camera goes out screaming the wife screaming. is the wife is screaming howling. Howling. screaming as if someone is torturing her like she's scared for her life because she is kevin kelly is screaming it was like it was very stressful they it did a really like good job stranger. of like, like making the the chaos like yes because it was, it was <sighs> aggressive and like no it really seemed like nobody knew what was going on during like 
during this whole like segment and thereafter. It was very like it seemed very like disjointed, very sudden, very, like it, nobody really knew what was going on. There was a lot of like exasperation from the people in the house, like the commentators, like it was a lot. So basically it cuts to Brian Pillman just like pointing the gun and then it goes like all scratchy and gray. Um and that's basically the end of what we hear from that for like the next two like segments per se essentially Basically the rest of the show until the very end right um and they keep trying to like cut back to it and they keep it like there's technical like issues um we'll they get, get the into, tech like, guy on the phone yeah we'll get into that um but after we kind of go back from that segment it cuts to jim ross in the ring um with this little podium in the center and vince is the entire time is basically being like jim ross has no idea what like what's going on like tee hee and like so like Essentially, Jim Ross is setting up this kind of face off um, kind of conversation between the WWF champion Shawn Michaels and the number one contender Psycho Sid. So they both like come down. They like do their little entrances. They like, you know, set themselves up to get talked to um, mm-hmm. Psycho Sid. Uh, it looked like Jim- family feud. I'm just it saying. really did. Like it, it was just a weird little podium. Yeah. Um, so next week, we are going to have uh, Shawn Michaels and Psycho Sid as a tag team competing for the WWF Tag Team Championships facing Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. Which is so random still. I'm saying it one more time. It makes no sense. And it's, it's going to be bad. Well, yeah, but that's, that's the, the point. point. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, um, uh, Shawn Michaels says, or Jim Ross kind of moves on past like, the championship match being like, That's next week. But what we're here to talk about is the Survivor Series. Um, So basically, uh, Shawn Michaels goes in, is like basically described like he's the one that went and got Psycho Sid back into the WWF from like the loony bin or wherever he came from. And Psycho Sid comes back with a, he like just shouts, he's like, that is bullshit. (laughs) And then like, he basically goes in to just be like, oh, like you think you like if you want to believe that like you came in and like saved me, like by all means, like you can go right ahead and think that. But that's not what happened. Um, And then Sean is basically being like, uh, like, you know why I like, you know why you're back here. Like, I don't need to like try to explain it to you or like these people. So like, you know what happened. So do with that information like what you yeah. want. Um, and then uh. JR trying to stir the pot a little bit asks mm-hmm. about the accidental elbow strike that um uh Psycho Sid did to Shawn Michaels while he was kind of rearing back to hit Owen Hart the previous week. Basically, they call JR on his BS. They're like, no, like it was an accident. Like we blah, agree. Blah, blah. We yeah, agree. Yeah. Like, we talked about it. And then it starts getting a little heated because then Shawn Michaels starts like going off and is basically just being like, like, you're not in my league bigger men than you have tried bigger men than you have failed it doesn't matter about size like i'm just better than you when it comes to ding ding bell let's go so obviously they start getting into each other's face because wrestling and that's what they do Mm Shawn michaels then knocks the podium over and it folds like as if literally as if it was like a pizza box or something like just like or it was like a a a house house of of cards cards. yes Yes. (laughs) it just like absolutely he like flipped one thing and it was all like It was a mess. I was like, okay. Um, All thank right. you for that, like, cardboard podium, guys. That was assembled with, like, a dollar and a dream. They were like, 100%. whatever, just throw it up there. We get Jim Cornette, who has apparently been newly reunited with his boys, all three of them. Bing, bang, Which go. was weird and not addressed at all. At all. Um, so, um, Jim Cornette starts, like, coming down, um, yelling about, like, oh, like, Vader is the man that should have this title opportunity, blah, 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 blah. And they start kind of, like, circling the ring, which kind of forces uh, Sean and Psycho to kind of go, like, back to back and kind of protect each other because they're, you know, there's a siege happening. And (laughs) there's a coup occurring. (laughs) Right. So Cornette's camp starts, like, entering the ring. They start, like, kind of making, you know, start fighting. Sean has... The British Bulldog in one corner. Psycho Sid has Vader in the other. And that is when Owen Hart sneaks into the ring with a steel chair, smacks Psycho Sid with it. um, And that is when Shawn Michaels disarms him and grabs the chair. Mm -hmm. Um, Thus, he clears the ring of Owen and the British Bulldog. Psycho Sid knocks Vader out and he turns around to find Shawn Michaels holding the chair. Thus... You know, when his he was little, caught with the weapon, brain 
Shawn Michaels hit him in the back as like kind of a retribution for the accidental shot that Elbow. happened last week. Um, so they start getting into each other's face, and that's when like a slew of referees start like coming down to the ring and like separating the two. So that's going to boil to a head next week. There is no way that next week's tag team match is not going to end up in some kind of confrontation between the two. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna just kind of see how that goes. I and honestly, I'm very excited for the match because. I, I've said it before, like Shawn Michaels does his best work when he's facing somebody who is like just a like larger, just a larger person. Like he just does a really good job working up to bigger wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and regardless of like the outcome, Shawn is going to make Psycho Sid look like a million bucks. He's going to make yep. Psycho Sid look Sells. like the strongest man walking the earth. So... <laughs> Either way, it's going to it's going to be thoroughly entertaining. So Mm -hmm. that's something to look forward to at the pay-per-view. And then we get the main event, uh, which is Mark Miro with Sable, Razor Ramon with Diesel. So they we bet. Why is this the main event? Not because of Mark Miro, but like, I don't need to see Razor Ramon. No, no, not at this time. So Mark Miro and Sable come out. You know, looking like a million bucks with a little matchy matchy costume. Today was a little blue, kind of like sequiny number with an open with back for back. Sable. Because oh, and she looked just oh, like she looked ripped. Ugh. I know. I was like, people don't talk about that enough. Like she's in shape, um, such in such good shape. Wow. So they come out. Razor Ramon comes out with Diesel, much to like the collective eye roll of the entire arena. There, like literally, his music hits, and there's just like an audible like. Like a like a ugh, like from the yep. crowd, like just like a, oh we we're still doing this, and like, that ugh. is the general sentiment like across the board. Or like the crowd hates it; they don't want it. Like every time that they are brought out on television, the crowd like pay attention. They hate it. Hate it. It's so, and it's more. I was gonna say it's more telling in their silence than it is because like they're not even like actively booing they're yes! disinterested it's literally like silent like they're if you look they're all sitting and they're just like like and because at least if they're like if it's someone you really really don't like you're engaged and you're like boo like you get into it yeah, like you you're love still to enga- hate them like yes I, and this they, they don't even care they don't, don't even care. care not even enough to like clap out of like decorum there's like mm, right and i get it i, and don't- I get it because uh, because I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know why yes. they thought that we were all just going to like accept it and like move on. Like it's just like, it was, right. And I, and I know like a part of it is like this, like it is entrenched in the storyline with JR. Like JR is clearly like trying to do something with this. Yeah. Um, but it's again, one of those situations where sure, if that's the story you're going to like try and tell, but I haven't seen Razor in like three weeks. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it's the same deal where it's like if you want me to be invested in the story, like which but either way I'm not. But if you want to <laughs> like make like, the eff- if you want to make the effort, then you have to make the effort. Like you if, uh, you cannot present a wrestler to me like once every month and expect me to care, especially yep. not one that has already like you're already really stretching as far as like trying to get these people like to care about these two wrestlers in particular. I was like, you have already shot them in the foot by giving them characters that already exist. Like you didn't, you're not even giving them the opportunity because now, even even if like they could be the best wrestlers in the world, they are now pigeonholed to do the like characteristics and like whatever of somebody else that they are not. Like it's not going to work because like everybody, every wrestler that I've ever like seen do like interviews or like, even like Vince McMahon talks about it is like all of the best characters are essentially like who these people are just like turned up to 11. Yes. You know what I mean? So if you're, if the entire premise of these two characters is that there's somebody else, you're shooting them in the foot. They're never going to be able to turn it to 11 because they don't even know, like they can't even like get to 10. You know what I mean? Like, because there, there's no way that they're going to effectively and convincingly get all of these people on their side. Like it just doesn't work. And like, Mm. if they had like leaned into the, like, Oh, everybody hates me aspect of it more in the beginning. Mm. I feel like I would have been like, all right, fine. You know what I mean? If they had gone like way over the top, like, yes. And been like, 
You know, if like JR had been on the mic every single time that they come down to the ring being like, this is Razor, this, you know what I mean? Like, then it's like a, like, oh, this is like a, a pointed thing. This is an mm-hmm. intended, like, oh, I know that this clearly isn't what it is, but I want to shove it down your throat. Like having yep. it appear every now and again is just like, mm. Yeah, especially after all of the extended hype in bringing them in. Right. Like it was such an ordeal having them come back, quote unquote. And then for them to just kind of be like, well, that was kind of a fluke and like whatever. I agree. Like if they had like sold it or like played it up, like every time they come out, they're like, yeah, boo, whatever. Like who cares? Like especially that they're going in this new direction where like they were like flipping people off and cursing and whatever, like really like engage with the crowd and said they like never say anything. Right. And they just kind of like appear fight disappear like it's it's kind and, of and it's at very one bland. point yeah and at one point like literally he um which we call it, the fake razor like does like a little move and like does the little like you know razor like thing and he literally just goes like the bad guy like i see him mouth the bad guy which is like the you know like the tagline or like the name of razor ramon he's he's supposed to be like the bad guy but like mm. baby you don't have to tell me that like Maybe I, no. I i feel like your actions should probably tell me that you're a bad guy like maybe maybe you would think maybe start there um but essentially you know i i will have my gripes about this uh, the entire time um so essentially during this match we do get kind of a phone call with the production team oh yeah uh like whoever was at the house uh with stone cold and brian pillman um essentially we are we get a phone call from uh his name's kerwin silfies and he's apparently one of the production team like members uh basically being like the house is dark we have no connection um stone cold's car is still here there was some kind of like explosion or gunshot sounds and then he gets cut off like he gets cut off. Like he goes to like say something to like somebody. He like you hear him go and like be like, hey, and then like he gets cut off. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, you know, just extra harrowing. Alarming. Yeah. Uh, so then uh Vince McMahon joins commentary after this point um and starts calling out Vince for basically like not taking responsibility for this, essentially being like, Oh, like, are you really like so surprised that like Stone Cold told you he was going there and you sent a camera crew anyway. He's like, you knew what you were doing. You knew this would be good for TV and ratings. Like, and you didn't care like about the, like the safety of like all of these people. Like it doesn't matter to you, does it? As long as you get your like, whatever. And Vince was kind of like, Vince was kind of like taken aback. Like he was like, oh, like don't get like smart with me. Like he like didn't really have like a response to it. Uh Right. Like, it's not like, you know what I mean? Like you are, he's, and he's like, um, Vince goes and says, like, oh, like, before you came out here, I said, like, the WWF is, like, responsible for, like, their part. And I was like, and Vince is like, ah, that's you. You're in charge. Are you not? Are you not the head honcho? Like, and he was just like, uh, like, yes. And he was like, then you're responsible for anything that happens. Then and you're he was responsible. Just like, and, like, Vince really didn't really, like, have a whole lot to say. And then JR, um, sorry, Jerry the King starts, like, being like once again just being like hey like can we call the match like you two like like can we cannot keep doing this like you two come out here and like don't just spend more time fighting with each other and no like nobody's calling the match like, yeah and and like you know it's bad when jerry is the voice of reason that's, that's what, what I, I was gonna say i was gonna know say cause... it's bad when that man that horn dog of a man is out here being like the just what no that misogynist psychopath is the only logical person at the table scary Scary. like because he actually said before jr got on commentary he said to vince like i just think this is like kind of wrong like did anyone call the police like to to protect like um their house and their family and like i this just seems like weird that we're like we keep like making a spectacle of this like and i was like the fact that he is saying that is crazy to me because and he was on he also said like the fact that you guys really didn't believe that stone cold was gonna show up is crazy because that's all he does is anytime he says he's gonna be there he's showing up knock knock like what's up right like so i don't know why you're all surprised like i don't understand like 
Yeah. Yeah. And- but then he, when he wanted to everyone, when JR and Vince were scrapping at the table, he was like, okay, can we like, talk about the match? Like, look, Sable's ringside. Let's talk about that. He never wants to talk about Sable. He hates her. He always right. talking about how ugly her hair is, how horrible her dress is, like whatever. And he goes, look, Sable's at ringside. Can we talk about that? And I was like, it must be so really bad down there. Energy reaching. must be heinous down there because he was like, look at that. Like, Yo, oh, wow. It was a cover and a, and a rollout or whatever. So like, bad. It's so bad. It's so, so like crazy. and and like and then the rest of the time, like they're very like low energy. And like Vince like apologizes like uh, like on air and is like, I'm sorry that we're like not like t- I I feel like he got like a little bit thrown by whatever Luster. Jr. said. Yeah. Um, and like couldn't really recover. And not necessarily from like a like oh like Jr. like wasn't supposed to say those things because you know it's all a TV show. Mm-hmm. But more that I feel like Jr. went like a step further than he thought he was going to mm-hmm. and kind of like didn't know how to get back like get the reins back it cuts to um kind of mark miro doing some fancy moves he's out maneuvering um razor ramon uh, <gasps> i uh, forgot about this triple h and mr perfect come out to ringside and at one point triple h fully just like yeets mark miro like off of the top rope so it's off of the top rope which allows razor to get the razor's edge thus giving him the the victory as if triple h and mr perfect have not done enough enough like the man has lost the title and now before when he was competing against vader and Shawn michaels and whatever now he's competing against fake razor ramon and like getting his his ass whooped i was just like what what like what why, why are we tearing this man down? I was like, the two of you with your stupid little ponytails and your nasty mm. suits can get on. Because, like, I'm like, you haven't done enough this long con and now you got to come out here and ruin my night with, right. by having to look upon you and coming right. out here and knocking him off the top rope and ruining his night? No. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm irritated. Oh, dude. I, I I just don't understand. Like, what? And, and again... And I guess, like, Mr. Perfect's supposed to go on, like, the live, like, phone show that they do. Yes. And, like, I guess he's going to explain, like, why he did what he did. Because I still want to know, because I still don't understand. And why we're even, like, making it, like, digging deeper. Like, you already, you already got the title. You already did your little thing. Like, what are we doing? Why why are we still going after this man? Like, what does this man have that you want? Like, he doesn't have anything left honestly nothing but sometimes and, uh, that's, that's kind of their mo like oh that yeah of course like kick them when they're I'm gonna down leave you but, destitute you know yeah and i think that it was i don't know if it was jr or one of the announcers said something about how like mr perfect allegedly like made a pass at sable like not long ago oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, and I so and that. she was just like like nope. no and i was like good for that's you right. girl stand that's by right. your man but i was um, that made me mad so and then after that, it cuts to it, they do like a little recap of the entire scenario at um Brian Pillman's house, and then they say like they oh they like they got a live feed like again. Um, like, we got it, we got to be on it, roll it. So and then it cuts to it's basically all of Brian Pillman's friends like whole like restraining brian pillman back and then like he's like screaming the wife is still sobbing screaming. just like absolutely unwell and then stone cold comes back inside comes just barreling back in and yeah because they said he left like, yelling like like call the police like the the wife is actually screaming just like howling screaming crying and like brian pillman's like knocked over be like you see like the last thing is like he's like falls like off of the couch like it's chaos there's like a like a swarm of people like restraining stone cold like it's a mess and then all the while like jerry the king's like did anybody get shot did anybody get shot and you're just like what is happening like what is going on and so like and then it just that's it it just it just ends yep it just ends it ends with just brian pillman just waving Waving the gun that's what i was gonna say in all that chaos in all the chaos because first of all they were like jerry the king is screaming did anyone get shot didn't get shot and they're like no one's when stone cold saw the gun he ran for it and then somehow the power was cut and then da 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 but then this whole time while they're restraining him they're pushing and fighting the wife is screaming kevin's screaming call the cops stone cold busts in they're fighting there's a truck full of like uh like uh, tech people tech also guys. out there just like afraid to come inside uh, fair and, because and like do, uh, you know, man's armed but like i get it a, a, a truck full of people also outside like yeah. it's just like what is what but is the happening? whole time 
the whole time, and I you don't realize it until the end. Brian Pillman with the gun, just waving, waving the gun willy nilly like it's a sparkler on Fourth of July. And I was like, what? Not nary a police officer. I didn't even get a pol like a stripper police officer. You didn't not get even a fake one. nothing. Not even yeah. a mall cop. Not even Paul Blart on his coming down in his little <laughs> yes, absolutely. You nothing. Nothing. I was like, wait. Where are the authorities? Uh, maybe because they, they couldn't figure out what city he was in. Maybe that's uh, what happened. Uh, 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 is, he in, <laughs> like, is he in Kentucky? Is he in Cincinnati? Like, where is he? But it was crazy because they asked, like, are the police coming? And the tech guy was like, well, we we called them, but, like, we're in the sticks. I don't even think they know how to get here. And I was like, what are we talking about right now? Yeah. Like, this is so, in it was so insane. chaotic. Talk about, like, blurring the lines of, like, what's real and what's not. Right. Like and I, I, I will say, I think I'm pretty sure um, that WWF gets in trouble a little bit with the network that they are for on. For the gun? I, the, 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 for this, because because it was not really like. It wasn't because it was the reality thing was so like blurred on it, like it gave the present like the presentation that like this man broke into this other dude's house and he was armed and was pointing a gun at him. And then you don't get any resolution. So it's not like it's like a television show where like, you know, like you, they like hear the gun bang and then it like cuts to black and you're like, Oh, okay. Like clearly this is like a scene. And they're like, it's not continued. even like, yeah. It, it, because it was so chaotic and so like the, re the line of reality was like blurred. I'm pretty sure they got in a little bit of trouble from the network being like, you can't do that. Like, and they should have, and so I love it. And I'm glad it happened because it was crazy. And like knowing in the future that no one got hurt. But imagine watching that in real time. That's like what that's I'm crazy. Saying. Because two one, I want to say I'm pretty sure Stone Cold broke the window with his bare hands, which right. is crazy because it's glass and I'm sure he's cut up. And if not, I don't even know. Cause you just like bop like, br breaking the glass. Mm -hmm. And then also that wife, she deserves like an, an Emmy or something because like she was selling it. She was screaming, crying on the couch, running her hands through her hair, just like, oh my God, my house. Oh, like I it know. was yeah. crazy. She, she was getting that check. You know what I mean? And they they said Kevin, Kevin. Kevin Kelly. I love that guy. And he like, why is he in that scenario? Didn't he say that he was like, why am I even here? Like, why no, but am that I that was here? the energy I got from him where he's yes. just like, he's like, call the police. Like, what like, are we doing? Oh, like literally at one point they ask him a question. He's like, I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> he's like, honestly, this is kind of ridiculous. And oh like, it, it's just like, he's well, like, I yeah. can't really hear you. And I don't know why I'm here. Like, he was just no, like... basically he's just like, I don't understand. Like, I was like, this man is armed. Like, why did you put like, you know what I mean? Like I, what kind of employer sends all of these employees just like, mind you, they're all employees. This is like a like a a hostage situation. Like, what's Kevin, going on? Who wanted to be a wrestling announcer probably since he was a child, and like <laughs> is in a house clutching that mic back against the wall while Brian Pillman waves a gun and he's screaming, "Call the police!" I mean, get that, get that in man. Cincinnati, Kentucky. I don't know, but he like that Maybe man. We can get Goldust to like sit in his lap or something. Yeah, hump his face gold dust. Oh, he would. Um, all right, so that's that that's how it ends. Um essentially. So we are gonna have more on that. We are a few weeks removed from the SummerSlam pay-per-view, um, which is gonna be wild. We're gonna see the debut of The Rock, The Undertaker, and Mankind are the gonna Survivor go Series. Off. Survivor right? Series, yes. Yes. What did I say? SummerSlam. Oh, lol. We and did I was that. like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Survivor series. I misspoke. Uh so it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. I think um we're now kind of like as far as the character work, we're now kind of really getting into the attitude era. So we're gonna start seeing these characters really come into their own and really kind of push the envelope as far as um what we're used to seeing thus far. Um I, I think mean, that's gonna be very exciting. Um talk about a jump. Talk about a jump. Uh, it, and as far as like the quality of product and this is only in like a couple weeks like this let's say like i want to say like up until the the boiler room brawl pay-per-view like even from then to now is a jump um and they were starting to head towards that direction and it's interesting to even just look at like the genesis of our episodes because like the matches were not that they were tame but we were talking about like let's rate our our matches like our favorite from like first to last like when right. we first oh, started oh. but so much happens we're just like i don't even know how to make sense of this like again and i say this every week it's like charlie from whatever 
uh, always it's always sunny with the cigarette and just like well then he was in the house like and i don't know the power <laughs> like, it's, like because we don't even like literally you start, you before we started this episode you were like um i can't wait to be like secondhand like stressed. embarrassed i was yeah, scared yeah. yeah i was like i because i thought it was gonna be more awkward because when you were saying like this clip circulates all the time i thought it was going to be like some sort of weird like no. stone cold just like moseys in the house and like it's oh, no, kinda... it's, i thought it's, it was going to be like an awkward thing it, it lives on for so long because it's so like just like jarring like it's such a like what the kind of moment that like it just lives like just forever it was so not what i expected but i'm also so happy it happened even though i'm i'm still shell-shocked and will I know, but, about like, this but you're really like, do you understand who Stone Cold is now? Like, do you get I it? I mean, I love him. I love him. Even before this all happened, the promo, I was like, this is like, this is just great. This is right. just great. Uh, and like, I just, he's, I'm telling he's coming into his own and it's so I good. It. And it's it, so meteoric, like out of the blue, just like, pew, like a yeah. shot. Yeah, because uh, no until, pun like, intended, but literally, but no, <laughs> up until this point, like r- right before this, like when he debuted, he was the ringmaster. That's what uh, we called him. Like, uh, and that, what do you do with that? Nothing. You don't nothing. do anything with that. Um, and they, they finally kind of like let him be in charge of like his the character. Brand. Yeah. And this is what's happening. I so, love it. Props so. to him. Cause I mean, who could ever, cause it's not, again, it's not even like he has like a, I mean, Stone Cold is like a, a, a name, like kind of like the undertaker or whatever, but it's like, just stone cold and all this like depth and like expansion and everything like props to that man because seriously like and I, again like we are still in the very much so in the beginning which uh, how do we how do we i know it gets i'm gonna have to like i don't know you, start meditating I, or something I, can, I can't wait it's gonna <laughs> yeah you're gonna yeah it, it we are only barreling towards more and more exciting things and on that note that is this week's episode of the New to Wrestling Podcast. As always, we appreciate you kind of listening to us wherever you find podcasts. Um, and we will catch you next week and we'll the next week. And we are barreling towards the Survivor Series. So wild. All right, guys. See ya. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.